He's always threatening to push the button. <laughs> Big red button. Hi everybody, I'm Jeremy Cordo. Peter Clayton's behind the camera with his big red button. A little bit of homework. Um, apparently I was, I said that uh, I had been corrected or we had been corrected uh, for, for, for uh, uh, writing uh, Linda Burney's name, B-U-R, and I was thinking it was B-I-R, and Pete, you're right. Yes. Apologies. But you are. Yeah. <laughs> but you are. Will not be the uh, last time, I'm sure, before that referendum that we have occasion to mention the Minister for Indigenous Affairs. Uh, and the other thing, what was the other thing? Oh, uh, the, the sound alike for um, Bob Rogers uh, was a fellow called Ward Austin. Now, you might remember Ward Austin. He was a tearaway. He was a tearaway. He married a 17-year-old schoolgirl, I think, from Abbotsley. And there was a great scandal, and the radio station jumped up and down, and her parents went out and bought a shotgun. And, oh, <laughs> the colourful days, early days of radio. Well, not so early. I mean, that was only the 1960s, 60s and 70s. He went to America. They both did. I can't think of the young lady's name. Beautiful young lady. He was about 45 at the time and she was 17. So that's scandalous in itself, isn't it? Anyway, he um, went to America or they went to America and uh, uh, came back mm, in the early 90s, I think, did some work and sadly died quite early in life. Ward Austin. Ward Pally Austin. He was called Ward Pally Austin. Loved getting dressed up in a Confederate general's uniform complete with the guns. Colourful, colourful, colourful. Before we get on to the stuff of the day, uh, it is the uh, 14th, end of the week, Pete? It is. Yes. The end of the week. Oh, golly, Bastille Day. 1789. Bastille Day. The French Revolution begins with the storming of the Bastille Prison in Paris. Uh, now celebrated uh, as France's National Day. I wish I had the French National Anthem, which is probably the best national anthem. Now it's just not bad, but uh, the Marseillaise. It's a wonderful national anthem. And the Star Spangled Banner ain't too bad either. Anyway, happy Bastille Day. 1988, WYHY -Y Radio offers one million dollars to anyone who can prove that Elvis Presley is still alive. I think the money was safe, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 19, no, 1850, the first public demonstration of ice made by refrigeration by a Florida physician by the name of John Gorey, 1850. 1965, Australian uh, R Ronald, or Ron Clark as he was much better known, runs the world record 10 Ks at 27.39 or 2739.4. 10 Ks. Anyway, uh, 1933, all non-Nazi parties are banned in Germany. Germany begins mandatory sterilization of people with hereditary illness. Hmm. 2014, the Church of England votes to allow women to become bishops. 2014. Took you a while, fellas. Uh, all churches are the same, though they, they, they do seem to, all religious bodies, in fact, seem to be the same. They tend to treat women very differently. Um, the Bayou Tapestry, likely first goes on display to decorate the nave during the consecration of Notre Dame. Notre Dame Bayou Cathedral in Bayeux, Normandy in 1077. 1077. They produced the most beautiful book based on the Bayeux Tapestry. Breathtakingly beautiful. Collector's item. Well, of course, the tapestry is, but the book wasn't bad either. 
1891, American John T. Smith patents, patents corkboard. Corkboard. 1891. Gerald Ford, 38th President of the United States, 74 to 77. Uh, Republican. Uh, 41st U.S. Vice President, 73 to 74, born Omaha, Nebraska. He died in 2006, but born this day in 1913. Benjamin Spock's Common Sense Book for Baby and Child Care was published for the first time in 1946. One year after I was born. No, I was going to say, I wonder if my mother ever bought that book. No, no, no. She had a very, very definite, her own view on how to bring up children. And indeed, it's just as well, because quite frankly, Benjamin Stock, uh, towards the end of his life, and I had the opportunity to talk to him a few times on the air, um, he openly admitted that he had made terrible mistakes. In fact, just forget everything he said, <laughs> which was a little difficult because he said so much. He was the go-to authority for bringing up children. I don't know what turned him around, but something must have happened. 1914, American engineer Robert Goddard is granted the first patent for liquid-fueled rockets. Billy the Kid. Ah, Pete? Yeah. Billy the Kid. American frontier outlaw and gunfighter of the Old West, shot by Sh Sheriff Pat Garrett. Dies of gunshot wounds at uh, 21, 1881. You said he used to play the violin? Yes. Mm. And Anna Bly, American politician, sorry, Australian politician, first woman Premier of Queensland, uh, was born in Warwick, Australia, outback town in Queensland, I think Warwick is, isn't it? 1960. Warwick. Yep. Anyway, if you remember the day, or you're celebrating the day, I hope it'll be a wonderful one, and we look forward to a great weekend. Here's something interesting. Um, have you ever noticed that most of the proper, mm, popular, or popularly acknowledged household cleaning agents are Mr. Muscle, Mr. Sheen, and Mr. Clean? And, and women are complaining that men don't help around the house? Come on! Peter Coote, thank you for that. I think that was well spotted. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Tunarama. The Tunarama Festival is, is uh, no more. They're going to finish that. I don't know. When I first came to South Australia, they used real tuna. I think later on they were using replica fish. But what can I say? It's unsavoury. Anyway, it's gone. I think that's probably good. Throwing tuna around. I don't get that. Somebody must have. Manufacturing in Australia as a percentage of GDP is closest to zero as it has ever been. Closest to zero as it's ever been. Gough Whitlam and the Lima Declaration, thank you. Thank you for divesting us of our manufacturing industry and enterprise, the engine room of our nation. <laughs> Quite amazing. No one talks about that. We've been trying to organise uh, a free trade agreement with the European Union for a long, long time. Now, Don Farrell, Senator Don Farrell and the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, were having a go over the last week <coughs> without any success either. Uh, and they seemed surprised. They really did. Now, they're, not, they're simply not used to people having a degree of self-interest, self-protection, determined and proud. You see, the Europeans don't want free trade with a country like Australia, which can do so much damage to their economy by importing, well, they would be importing products, probably superior products to the ones they've got, which will do damage to the locals. So you see, we don't have the same kind of determination to look after ourselves and look after our own. The Europeans say, no, we are going to protect 
the local farmer and his products. It's hardly surprising. Self-interest, fellas. We should be practicing it. Um, another story out of the same kind of bag. Parmesan, feta, mozzarella, uh, prosecco, wine. I don't think I've ever tried prosecco wine. Um, uh, Italian? Well, uh, I suppose the authentic, the authentic one would be Italian, but we produce a Prosecco wine. Now, these Europeans want us to stop using these names. Rubbish. They're generic. What's next? We can't make uh, pizza in Australia? What absolute rubbish. Neapolitan slice? Uh, Neapolitan sauce? Neapolitan ice cream? Spaghetti bolognese? You could go on and on forever. Let's just ignore them. <laughs> ignore them. They don't want to free trade agreement. I'm not exactly against that. I think they should look after their own and we should too. I'm trying not to sound irrational here and I'm not one for conspiracy theories but I'm told by various correspondents that the Labour government is positioning itself with a new law which will control a lot of what we hear say and see on social media in particular. This means of communication, by that I mean this, right here, this means of communication and the podcast which you can also listen to, Jeremy Cordo's Court of Public Opinion. This means of communication would be a target. Just as they control all the other means of communication, radio, television, mobile phones, all that stuff. It seems that the government, and I'm assured that the people on the payroll of ACMA, A-C-M-A, -A, ACMA, will be instructed by the government through this new innocuous sounding bill, which is about to be legislated. It's called the communication, no, the communications Legislation Amendment Bill 2023. Hmm. Doesn't sound dangerous, does it? <laughs> now this is going to give ACMA, the cop on the beat, new power. There are five women and one man who really control everything that we hear or see and probably say on social media. ACMA will be looking out for misinformation and disinformation. I wonder who decides that. When I hear or see stuff, you know what? I decide for myself. Huh. But listen, this is dangerous. If these people hear something on the internet, on a platform like this, for example, or an iPod and they don't like it might well be right but they don't like it that's fine they can always turn it off make a comment and in a few weeks with regard to ourselves you can ring me and put me right sound off but it sounds very much to me like it's going to be ACMA who will be sitting in judgment. It sounds a little bit like government control and potential censorship. It looks to me like this government will have total control with zero accountability for what this body, ACMA, chooses to decide. Of course, I have to point out that this new legislation makes the government totally exempt from its own rules <laughs> which is a bit like the truth in advertising stuff in advertising you have to tell the truth you can't mislead the public unless of course you're a politician or a political party and you are exempt from the truth in advertising legislation i think their dream is probably through this new act of parliament to make sure that 
social media becomes nothing more than a mouthpiece for the government, the left. And of course, don't forget the woke ideologues who control it. Social media is probably the Wild West. Billy the Kid would be running around in it if he was around these days. But it is one of the very last avenues for self-expression. Sure, there are maybe things about which you do not agree, but that's what makes it interesting. It's freedom of speech, freedom of thought. Everyone has a right to be heard. You know the old Voltaire thing, I disagree with what you say, but I shall fight to the death for your right to say it. You don't have to listen. And that's a good point. Who is going to decide what is misinformation and disinformation? Who is going to decide what causes harm? I mean, who defines harm? Something that might make you think, wow, <laughs> that's dangerous. If I sit here and complain about the rubbish that's promoted with regard to climate change, for example, they could probably jump on me and say, I'm causing harm to the environment of Australia. No, 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 no. no. We just simply happen to have a different opinion. We have to have dissenting opinions. Whether it's global warming or gender reassignment, or the voice, or whatever. Another one of our freedoms stands ready to be removed. Let's just see how vigorously the opposition opposes it. And let's just see if the media will come out with a position. I'm really looking forward to hearing that. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for viewing The Court of Public Opinion. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll talk again on Monday. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Pete and I will be back then. Believe in yourself, and goodbye for now.